Hey everybody, thank you for watching Leaf by Leaf. Today I want to talk about a short book, really a novella, that I read this past Friday night on recommendation from one of my subscribers, Liquid Pebbles. Thank you very much for this recommendation. It is Adolfo Cesare's The Invention of Morale. And as soon as I saw that it had a prologue from uh, Jorge Borges, I jumped on it immediately and purchased uh, this short book. I'm very thankful to uh, New York Review Books. They have been putting out some wonderful publications. Um, and again, Borges, uh, both his fictions, his non-fictions, and his poems, uh, I can't get enough of this guy. And indeed, uh, the invention of Morel reminds me of uh, Borges a lot. Um, it also has uh, affinities with Henry James's The Turn of the Screw, which I read so long ago you see that it's in this uh, very dated uh, Penguin Classics uh, cover. And it has ties into Philip K. Dick. Right off the bat, <clears throat> uh, especially when you read the very first sentence of the book, which states, Today, on this island, a miracle happened. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so we're on an island, and it's called The Invention of Morel. So immediately, I'm thinking um, the island of Dr. Moreau, which is the H.G. Wells novel from 1896, um, which is about an island with these human-like hybrid beings. So right off the bat, I was wondering, um, you know, with that, um, obvious title um, allusion uh, has he given away uh, the secret and in fact he has not this book follows a beautiful structure for stories of this kind um, which basically uh, it's four steps as I see it this formula one you set up a realistic situation uh, with a likable character. So in this case, it's this situation where we have a sort of castaway, um, but it's a voluntary castaway. Um, he is a fugitive. The authorities uh, want to capture him and to escape. He hears about this mysterious and uninhabited island, and he makes his way there with the help of uh, some other minor characters. Number two, um, the story begins unveiling strange events and phenomena. Um, and along with these, this is uh, sort of a, a sub part of this second uh, frame, framing of the story. Uh, as these strange events are unfolding and these strange phenomena, the character is constantly thinking out loud. We're in the first person here and he, he or she, they're constantly thinking out loud all of the theories about what's going on. And that is a very effective method of constantly keeping us, the readers, uh, engaged. Um, otherwise, we start either chasing down different possibilities um, or clinging to probably what's going on um, as the root of this mystery. Um, and that kind of overshadows the reading experience. It's much more effective of uh, the reading experience if the author is constantly debunking uh, the red herrings that, that uh, they're leading us into. Um, it keeps us on our toes, keeps us guessing, and like, okay, well, I'll throw that out. All right, then number three, uh, you reveal the mystery. You actually spell it out, put it out there. Um, and this, this was, is, is really um, a neat idea. Uh, instead of saving like this big epiphany um, towards the very end, um, that, can, that can often be deflating because really, if you spend this much time uh, amping up the mystery, really there's nothing um, that can live up to those expectations that you've set up for the reader. However, what you do after revealing the mystery, which in this case, um, you know, it, it wasn't like the most hard-hitting reveal, uh, but the fourth step is what really pays off. 
um, for these types of stories. And that is where you take the rules of what's really going on and then you play off of them in a very clever way. And this book, Invention of Morel, really does a good job of that. Um, as Borges' uh, prologue um, points out, this is this story <clears throat> is sort of a polemic against claims that the adventure novel was dead um, and the predilection of readers for the psychological novel. So what uh, Cesares does here is he blends the two together. We get um, this Robinson Crusoe-like adventure where it seems like it's just going to be kind of aimless and there's not really a thick plot, but then combines that um, with a very uh, well-plotted story and the psychological element. And there were lots of ties for me um, into Henry James, the turn of the screw. Um, for example, every time uh, the governess in Turn of the Screw sees these apparitions, um, you'll see if you review this in sort of a psychological scope that something has just heightened her uh, sexual desire. So it's almost like these, these apparitions are springing from that. And we get some of that in here. Uh, the lady that uh, stares out at the sunset has completely captivated the protagonist here. Um, and there's almost a link there between, you know, his longing for her and then these um, apparitions. Of course, this is just leading us along. Um, not to say that that isn't something that came out, however subconsciously, for Cesares. Um, but it, uh, it's quickly debunked um, by these repetitions um, that are really interesting. And, and Cesares plays off of the concept of, of repetition very well um, that leads up to the reveal. This book um, brings out the, the powerful theme of... Um, love forever denied. So this this deep longing um, that that will uh, seemingly forever uh, be closed off. And in fact, um, on page ninety five, that ache of desire forever denied comes out in this um, beautiful sentence. Uh, you have to have the context here, but it says Faustine is dead. That Faustine lives only in this image for which I do not exist. Beautiful sentence. So some of the mysteries uh, or theories behind the mystery that the character starts to throw out, um, he's hallucinating, uh, these are alien beings, he's actually dead, he's in purgatory, they're ghosts, he's a ghost. Um, it's a really effective means of, of sort of, like I said, taking the, the mind of the reader that's constantly trying to jump ahead um, and establish what's going on here um, and debunking them one by one so that we're left uh, compelled to read on to figure out what's going on. There's another cool thing uh, that Cesares includes in here and that's um, these editor's notes um, that work really well in my opinion to keep the story rooted in reality. We get Freud's uh, sublimation through art which was his greatest mechanism for freeing uh, repression. It says, I know that writing this diary can perhaps provide the answer. It may even help produce the right future. And that right there, uh, that little tag that says it may even help produce the right future. Um, also kind of goads the, the reader into believing that, okay, maybe this is all just construct of consciousness um, because we've already seen little things in here um, where there's this uh, mad scientist figure like Dr. Moreau, but in this case it's Dr. Morell um, who's obsessed with uh, bottling up consciousness, uh, extracting it from the human machinery and flesh. We get uh, Nietzsche. Uh, he calls it the atrocious eternal return to uh, lead us into a red herring. To sum it up, uh, hopefully without giving it away at all, it ends beautifully. Um, and the reading experience really uh, is top notch in my opinion from beginning to end. Uh, Borges in his prologue 
actually makes quite a statement about this book. He says, to classify it as perfect is neither an imprecision nor a hyperbole. Wow, what, um, what a comment from such, uh, such a prominent figure uh, in literature. I highly recommend this, and again, uh, thanks to Liquid Pebbles, uh, one of my subscribers for the recommendation. I have uh, noted down every single subscriber's recommendation that I have not read, and I hope to continue to get to them. Thank you all for watching, and go and read The Invention of Morel.